Hey everybody, Father Wani here. I am still in Hong Kong. I'll be here till the end of the week and uh, we will continue studying the Gospel of Mark till the end of this week. Now, uh, remember that the texts for this week are really the texts taken from what we uh, refer to as the Holy Week. So this is happening on Tuesday in the Holy Week. Our text is from Mark chapter 12 verses 13 to 17. Once again, Please pause this video if you need to, read the text and then continue listening. It will really and truly help you. But for those of you who have read uh, the text already, you would have realized that we ended our last teaching yesterday in chapter 12 verse 12 where the Pharisees, the scribes and the elders, three groups of them, realized that he told the parable about them and it was the parable of the wicked tenants. They were the ones who were ready to murder the Son of God. So clearly they are not going to give up. Remember I told you these are a series of uh, four confrontation narratives and we are now in the second confrontation narrative and each of these narratives deal with one area of life. So this one is going to deal with politics. They're going to engage our Lord on a political question. Then tomorrow we'll have it on a theological question and then finally on an ethical question. So right now we are on a political question. But it's very interesting to see that uh, the Pharisees now come in with the Herodians. These were two groups of people who could never get on the same page on any given day. But as they say, Politicians make strange bedfellows and I think very often uh, enemies also make strange bedfellow. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's how they look at it. So here come uh, the Herodians and the Pharisees and they come to Jesus. Now very clearly we are told in, in scripture that they come to catch him out on what he said. You know clearly they could not catch the Lord on his works because his works itself were unmatched. He drove out Satan from people, he raised the dead, he cured the sick, he gave sight to the blind, the list just went on. They could not catch him on his works. So what did they do? They catch him on his words. And we see this so often, even today. You know, when people want to get you, they get you on a technicality. They will never get you on the heart of what you did. They'll say, Oh, you have a good heart, but you should. Technically, you were wrong. So they are trying to catch Jesus on a technicality. And what is the technicality? They come to him. <laughs> I like the way they begin. It's a method that my dear friend, the late father Larry Pereira, would call lather and shave. Lather in the sense, you know, you butter up the person, then you pull out the knife to shave them and give them a good nick also. If not, you know, uh, cut them with the blade. So lather and shave is what they follow because. They say to Jesus, they are praising him, lots of platitudes. They say, Master, we know that you are an honest man and you are not afraid of any man. You don't care for their rank. And that is true because Jesus took on the might of the Jewish religious establishment. I mean, translated today, it would have been the Pope, the Cardinals, the Bishops. He took them all on. Yeah. So they say, well, we know that you are an honest man. They admit he's an honest man yet they don't want to deal honestly with him. See the dishonesty in that very statement. And then they say, we know that you teach the way of God in all honesty. There goes honesty again, this time with God's word. If Jesus was teaching it with all honesty, why were they not following him? So you see the dishonesty there once again. But mercifully, sometimes even Satan admits to the powers of God, I don't know why man can't. Yeah, these very satanic people in that sense were admitting that he teaches, Jesus teaches the way of God in all honesty. Now, so they are, throw him a political question. And that political question is very simple. It would have got him into trouble one way or the other. Is it permissible? Now look at the question. Is it permissible or is it lawful, depending upon what translation you have, to pay taxes to Caesar? Now paying taxes to Caesar is the law. So you had to do it. What the problem was that the Jews saw the Romans as the occupiers, the hated ones. So 
they want to know from him from a Jewish perspective should we pay taxes now if Jesus had to say no they would have reported him to the political establishment to the local governor and Jesus would be thrown into prison if not if not worse and if he had to say yes pay taxes then he would have looked very poorly in the eyes of the Jewish people who saw the Romans as political and also they you know suppressed uh, religious freedom we know that the chief priests at the time of Jesus was nothing short than a political appointee something that we also see happening uh, with the Chinese government wanting to politically appoint bishops in China we saw this in India with Indira Gandhi uh, who attempted uh, many years ago at the time of Cardinal Valerian Gracious uh, to want to have a say in the appointment of bishops so uh, this happens across the world don't be too shocked it didn't only happen at the time of Jesus so is it permissible to pay taxes yes or no they actually give him a yes or no question to corner him now as I often say you ask Jesus a stupid question you get a stupid answer okay and here they got it I think full measure pressed down and running over was this now what does Jesus do he says show me the money show me the money in your pocket you have yes now technically if they were in the temple they would have a shekel which is the Jewish currency if they were out in the secular world they would have had a denarius which is the Roman currency now why would you have two currencies because the denarius had an graven image of the Emperor that money didn't technically even belong to them it belonged to the Emperor it's loaned to you that kind of thing our money belongs to the government of India we saw that in India when we had the demonetization we just had to surrender all the 500 rupee notes so the the denarius had the the image of the Emperor but it also had this name and called him divine that he was divinity and Jesus says show me the money and he says to them and this is very important depending upon the translation whose head or in many translations whose image is this and they will say it is Caesar's now if it's Caesar's what are you doing with currency in your pocket that has the face and the head of your oppressor whom you detest and an op oppressor who claims that he is divine that he is God this is a graven image why would you carry it but you see we always have double standards we have double standards so Jesus says whose head whose image and I'm going to come back to that word image whose image is this and they say Caesar's and he says give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar it doesn't really belong to you why why do you need it why do you you want to cling on to money you are lovers of money and so when it comes to money you will suppress your faith but if it belongs to Caesar give it back to Caesar and in that sense we also know from Romans 13 that God encourages us to pay our taxes please don't take this as an excuse for not paying your taxes because you don't like the government or you think the government is oppressive read Romans 13 but coming back give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and the second part I think is far more important for you and me give to God what belongs to God why when Jesus asked that question whose image is this your mind should switch to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 because we were made in God's image and likeness so if we were made in God's image and likeness we need to give ourselves back to the rightful owner we should be giving of ourselves back to God and here I want to give you this really this spiritual teaching one is we give to society to government what belongs to government and here's the strange thing do you notice that we give to government we pay our taxes very easily why because there's always a threat you'll go to jail we don't give of ourselves to God because God is love and we take him for granted but even more and here I might be you know some of you might misunderstand because the minute a priest talks about money all of you get up and listen relax okay everybody please relax one is giving yourselves back to God in service giving as a young man will ask Jesus which is the greatest commandment to love God with all your heart your soul your might with all your being but the other way of giving back to God is also your money 
you know, <laughs> a friend of mine once said to me, he said, those who give 10 rupees in 1970 are still giving 10 rupees in the church. Now, please don't start jumping up and down and diminishing the fact or start claiming that I'm rubbishing the widow's might. I am not. You know, many people say, I don't want to give to the church, Father. I don't know what the church does with um, our money. I don't know what the priests are doing. I think God should say the same to you. I don't know what you're doing with the money I give you. Uh, you're misusing it. But my suspicion is that those who don't give to the church are neither, they'll say, I won't give to the church, I'll give to charity. My suspicion is you're neither giving to charity nor you're giving to church. My suspicion. And I feel very strongly that those who are givers, their hands go to their pocket automatically. You know, we always have friends around us. As we say, their hands never go to their pocket. They never spend on anything. They'll pretend that they want to, uh, you know, I'm sure you're laughing because you're thinking of someone. They pretend that they want to pay for the meal, but, you know, they're always very slow to the draw. And I suspect that those who don't give to the church don't give to charity. They give grudgingly. And I must tell you this, that God loves the cheerful giver, not my words, the words of scripture. Now, uh, many people will ask me, Father, you know, about this business of tithes. Should I give 10%? I would say give as much as God has given you and give generously. <laughs> you know, very often when I've spoken about this ministry, how do you think this ministry is supported? It is supported by good people. I need to live, I'm on sabbatical and I live, I must tell you, I am blessed with friends who will welcome me into their homes, pay for my tickets. Somebody asked me on, uh, I get some curious questions. Uh, somebody asked me, Father, why do you wear this rosary? Uh, like it looks like some Hindu mala. Somebody asked me, how, Father, you're traveling a lot. Sometimes I don't know what is in these questions. Ask me a question directly, if you must. Don't play games like the Pharisees and the Herodians did, you know. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that everybody does, but people do. They layer their questions between, uh, you know, oh, you're traveling, Father, you're traveling again. Oh, yes, I'm traveling again. Yeah. And when I work, I work sincerely from 3.30 in the morning till 9.30 at night, non-stop. Do you do that? I did that to the detriment of my health. So, uh, here's what I want to say to all of you. Give. You know, don't, don't, uh, don't be grudging about your giving. God has given you. Uh, also, you know, the, I, and I opened my Bible again because I made a point that Jesus was truly gifted the way he answered his critics. And the Lord had his critics, he had his haters, he had every one of them. Jesus was gifted in the way he answered his critics. He was clever. You need to be smart with your faith, not a buddhu. Yeah, For those who are not familiar, buddhu is a Hindi word meaning... Uh, you know, ignorant or stupid, yeah? Uh, but don't be silly because God asks us not to be silly. Jesus tells us, you know, that the children of light need to start behaving like the children of light because the children of darkness are more astute. But my point is also this, that if Jesus was tremendously gifted, so are we. Today, maybe you can sit back and ask yourself, what is the gift that God has given you? Uh, don't take my teachings amiss, sometimes I'm a bit strong. Somebody sent me a comment and said, Father, very strong teachings from Hong Kong. Uh, yes, because the last week of Jesus was filled with some very strong words and they were for the Jewish rel religious establishment. Enough of the games that we play. Let's start being honest uh, with each other in what we want to say and say truthfully. Don't forget to like this video, share it. Um, and if you've reached this far and also have not uh, contributed towards the running of this uh, ministry, please do so. Uh, you can reach me on my number via WhatsApp 9820242151. God bless you, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Don't forget to like, share and leave your comments. Bye for now.